Hi, my name is Ben, and I'm here with our verse for the week. It's from Luke chapter 12, verse 10, where Jesus says this, Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. I wanted to talk about this scripture today to alleviate fear in a lot of people I've talked to as a pastor through the years who are scared they've somehow committed this unpardonable sin of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk about what Jesus is saying, what he's not saying here in this text. It really helps us to look up other scriptures where he's talking about this in Matthew and Mark and recognize that what's happening is Jesus doing these amazing things for people. He's healing them um, of disease. He's healing their bodies of uh, physical ailments. He's forgiving their sins. And people who are downtrodden without hope are coming fully alive and excited. And the religious people who are watching as eyewitnesses of these things, instead of being happy for these people and excited about what God is doing through Jesus, and it's clearly God at work in him, they're attributing these good things to the devil and not to the Holy Spirit. And that is what Jesus is saying is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I love this illustrative thought. It says, once you declare the spring of fresh water is in fact polluted, you'll never drink from it. See, the problem uh, is never with God's willingness to forgive us of our sin. Jesus always wants to forgive. God wants to forgive. Jesus came on a rescue mission to reconcile us back to God by forgiving us of our sin and taking out of the way that which separates us from God. And the Bible tells us God doesn't want anybody to perish. So the issue is not with God. The issue is with us being willing to come to God. And you know, it's possible to so badly not want God to be true that no matter what he reveals to you, no matter what works are done, you so badly want to be your own God and remain autonomous from him that you refuse to accept even obvious things that he's doing in your life to get your attention, to draw you to himself. And, and the question is then, why would anybody do that? Well, I want to, um, I want to kind of guess that part of the problem is we don't think that God has our best interests in mind. We don't really believe that if we were to come to him, uh, he would bring us fullness of life and joy. And maybe that's part of your church background. Maybe you're raised in a church where, man, you're like, if this is what heaven's like, I'd rather go to hell. I mean, is that bad? Is that boring? You know, and I'm just joking around a little bit, but um, maybe you've just been seeing representations of Christianity, they're just not appealing to you. And I just want to tell you, Jesus is the authentic deal. And he says, at my right hand are pleasures forevermore, that if you'll come to me in my presence is fullness and joy. In fact, Jesus says something audacious to us in John chapter 15. He says, if you'll come to me, the author of your life, I'll give you joy and your joy will be full because your joy will be my joy, a supernatural joy. And so the reason I think that so many people don't want Christianity to be true and don't want to come to Jesus is they think that somehow Christianity is a buzzkill. Somehow God doesn't want us to have fun. But the truth is we're settling for so much less than God has for us when we refuse to come to him and learn from him and see his goodness and receive his nature into us because he wants to put his love in us. He wants to put his joy in us. He wants to put his peace in us and make us come fully alive. So if you're worried that you've somehow committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, understand just the fact that you're worried about it assures you that you haven't. And when we're talking about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and the unpardonable sin, it's, it's an attitude of heart, a hardening of the heart that lasts a lifetime that refuses to come to God, that starts to so badly not want it to be true that you would even call good evil rather than um, attributing it properly to the goodness of God and the Holy Spirit. So I hope that clarifies it for you. I hope this video has helped you in some way and served you in some way. And I want good for you this week. Thanks for tuning in. All the best.